Those are great news. Okay, let me show this. Fantastic. Uh, okay, everyone can see it? Yeah? Perfect. Okay, let's start. The six four chord. Uh, um, okay, so. Um, the fourth was considered an imperfect consonant. Indeed, even a dissonant. This is in um, the call traditional harmony. Um, when the rules of harmony started to crystallize, not only always as we saw in counterpoint yeah. um, but from Philippe de Vitry more or less yes a long time ago yes even in the Baroque period already the fourth was considered to be a dissonant yeah a fraction but that's why he says the fourth was considered yeah in the past but I'm clarifying when exactly the past. This view reflects a correct intuition for the fourth does actually appear among the first overtones, but in the opposite direction. For example, if we have if this is C, C is on the middle note, the first overtone, second overtone, the octave, third overtone, the third, yes, the relation, the ratio three, two. And mm -hmm. then the fourth, sorry, you hear it? The fifth. The fifth. What do you say? Third. Oh, sorry. I must leave today. <laughs> Thank you, you uh, The third, yeah, the third overtone is the fifth. I, 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 maybe that's when the wires started to mix up. The third overtone, the relation 3 2 against the, the first overtone or the fundamental note is the fifth. The interval of a fifth. Actually, a compound fifth, to be more precise. And the fourth overtone is the octave again. Now, from this, yes, let's say that this is, I don't know, C2, this is C3, this is G3, and this is D4. Yeah, so C2, C3, G3, C4, basically, which is C, G3 and C4, yes, we have a fourth. So it's not from the uh, root to the fifth, but to the, from the fifth to the root, or first overtone. Yes, that is what he uh, referred to the opposite direction to the root. And is therefore a less simple consonance than those intervals produced by the ascending order of the overtones. In almost every consonant chord, however, yes, ah, sorry, Laura, do you do you know the, 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 the uh, numbers of the when I'm saying three, four, C four, do you have any idea what, what I'm saying? Yeah. No, but I can look it up, it'll be fine. Okay, basically you have to know that C, middle C is four. Okay. Yes, every every note has a number. So C4, yeah, it is the same as the middle C. So consequently, the, 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 the following seven notes above that middle C, yeah, they will have a number yeah, that, that matches that four. So D4, E4, yeah, so you have C, middle C. B4, E4, F4, G4, A4, B4. Now, of course, the next octave will be C5. Okay. And so on and so forth. Now, that's going in ascending motion. In the ascending, in the ascending way, the previous C is C3. Yes, it's the, the one that is the, in the base clef, the, the second space. Yes. So C3, D3, E3, F3, G3, B3, and so on and so forth. Yeah? Okay. So having the first two notes of the piano, A and B, being zero. Okay. That's it. Yes, and the last C is eight. The last last C. Okay? 
That's what I'm saying. When, it, when, when, when we are referring to numbers, we're referring to a very specific pitch, frequency. Say. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Uh, in almost every consonant chord, however, we find the fourth between two of the voices and regard it as a dissonant, only whenever its lower tone is in the bass. The older theory says it is permitted if a lower fifth or third covers it. In all other cases, it is to be prepared and resolved as a dissonant. A unique claim is thus made for the fourth, that is two-tone form now addition, when the lower tone is in the base. Now a consonant when it is covered, furthermore, in another position, in the inversion, the same two tones produce a perfect consonant. The fifth or certain inversion of each of the following rule holds. Inversion of every perfect consonant yields a perfect consonant. Inversion of every dissonance yields a dissonance. That is too contradictory, not simple enough to be natural. And we start. <laughs> this is the rule that, you know, these are the treatises of harmony. Now he's going to enlighten us with some explanation about why he considers this. Um, uh, the, the nature, let's say, yes, the acoustic nature of the second inversion or the fourth or the fifth chord, yes, which by the way, uh, I don't know if it's, I put it somewhere, but the figure bass is 6 4 because of the nature of the interval, yes, a 6 from the bass, a, a 4 from the bass note, yeah. Okay, so. To me, the following explanation seems simpler. A bass note that is not at the same time the fundamental or the root note yeah, seems to have the urge to replace the chord tones with its own overtone, that is, to become itself the fundamental. Yeah? Naturally, remember that the, with, because of the overtone series, the, always, the lowest tone we refer it Yes, as the fundamental note. So everything that we put on the base naturally will be connected. Yes, so we can unconsciously refer to the uh, to a fundamental note. Yeah, not an, a, a random overtone. Yeah. Now, as has already been shown in page 58, the bass tone of the six four chord finds plenty of support for its urge in the overtones of the other chord components. I don't know if you if you remember that. Well, Lori was not even here, actually. Let's go very, very briefly. Uh, 58, let me find it first. Yeah. 29. Uh, let me see if someone will remember this. Very important topic. This. Yeah, the difference between the six chord and the six four chord, because in this chapter he explains the difference, but he doesn't actually elaborate on the six four chord. It just says that, I will explain this to Laura a little bit because if not she will explain. Uh, because you didn't see it, that's why I'm saying, yeah? So every, every note, yeah? Every note of the chord, yeah? E, G, or C, or G, C, or E, these three notes, There you go. And there you go. Yeah? Are the notes of the chord of the 6 4 chord, the 6 chord, sorry, the first inversion of C major, being E the lowest, and 6 4 chord being G the lowest? Yeah? You have to see that if, if you were um, playing this, yes, E will be on the bass, G, C, yeah, and then the 6 4 chord, so the second inversion. 
would be G, C, and E. Yeah? Is six four chord, is it just another name for a second inversion chord? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, he follows the uh, more traditional uh, way of naming it, which is uh, following the figure base mode. Yes. Uh, the figure base is a system that started in the Baroque period. Yeah. Uh, mostly for uh, performers. Yes, they were, it had to very quickly to uh, not see the chord, but it wasn't like numerical. Yes, a uh, uh, numerical code. Yes, to to the uh, note intervals, and those intervals actually make a chord. Yeah, for example, a a, a, a root position chord started to be five three. Why? Because it's just all about it was all about the relation between the root and the rest of the interval. Then, uh, with the use, yeah, root position, we, we don't even put anything. We just we know, yeah. It's known that we don't have to fight with, yeah? If you don't have anything, it's a reposition. If you have, for, for example, the first inversion was 6 3, yeah? Okay. Why 6 3? Because between the E and G, you have a 3, a third, and then E and C, you have 4, yeah? Now then, you start the 3, it, it stopped, yes? In, what, what happened really? You said E and C is four. You were explaining six three, no? Um, yeah, G, what, what did I say? E and C. Ah, e yes, e yes. E Thank C you, Yorios. My mind is not, it's not. E and G, yes, E and G is a third, E and C is a six. Sorry. Uh -huh. Thank you, Yorios. E, yeah. If I say stupid things like this to today, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know you're, you're, you're following me. Uh, so that's the relation between E and C is the six, yes? That is the six chord, yes? And the six four chord, because between G and C, yes, let me see your girls. <laughs> you have a, yes, a four. <laughs> and then between G and E, you have a six. Okay. Yes? Uh, yeah. And you would actually write. That six four six three yes. And uh, today we don't have anything. I mean, when in root position, we don't write anything. Six four a six six chord. We just have a six yes. Old times six three, not anymore. And then the only one that actually remained the same was the second inversion, which is a six four chord, which is six first, the upper number, lower number is a four. Okay. That's how we write it. Yeah. Okay, so each one of these notes have its own overtones because when you play a note, what he says, what he states, yes, and everything in this uh, treatise is going to be related to acoustics, yes. Now, especially to Laura, the lesson that I, I talk about the overtones, uh, memorize it. <laughs> it's the most important lesson <laughs> in the book. <laughs> Why? Because that's why I stayed, I think, one or two lessons there. Yes, so as you watch it and look at the book and study by heart. Yes, literally by heart. Yeah. Uh, because everything is related to that. Every single little thing that is in this book is related to the overtones. Yes, to the acoustics. Not because what he said states is that we cannot put morality in music. We cannot say this sounds bad, this sounds good. Yes, what he based himself in the acoustics. Yes, it's acoustic reason. And this is the reason between the, the difference between the six four and the six four chord. So every single note that you play on the piano or you play on the instrument, whatever, it will produce its own overtones. So we have the E, a first overtone, second overtone, the octave, third overtone, the fifth, fourth overtone, the uh, octave again, double, double octave. Fifth overtone the third, and then the sixth overtone is the fifth to the octave. Yes, an octave about the third. That's why it's a sixth or more. Uh, the, the same thing happens. This is a mathematical relation. Yeah, just see the lesson because I cannot go over that, but, but there's a mathematical relation. The same happens with all the notes. Now, 
Um, the uh, anyone remembers the difference between the six core and the six four chords? First of all, I mean the square, the letters, why they are highlighted. Uh, what was the difference? Why the uh, the six chord was? I mean, it, it could be used. Uh, in, you know, being in safe, let's say, yes, in a safe mode, and the six four chord in this page fifty eight, he said, "Wow, you better not use it now, because as he says, it means dissolve." Yes, exactly, because there was a reason why the, the squared letters, the squared notes, no, because the the chord is closer the the chord of the yeah. root, the G major, let's say, is closer. Exactly, because yeah. exactly because the overtones that this this chord produces, the closer overtones, yes, are G and B, which are the the chords more related to the this chord, this note, sorry, which is the fifth. Yes, this, um, the B, yeah, uh, and they, actually the B, yes, uh, or the G, they're a little bit far further away, let's say, yes, from the uh, this overtones, that's why, yeah. So that's why he says, consequently, it's more urgent to resolve. Yeah, the problem of the sixth core is not less real, but it's far farther from solution, the moment like latent in it is not great enough to compel action and maybe ignore the six chord. The six four chord, no, it, it requires an action. Yes, because the the overtones are closer. Yes. Uh, and these overtones are related to the dominant and not to the actual root of the chord, which is in this case the major. Uh, I be any down um, Laura by, by the end of the uh, I mean, after you watch the, the lesson and, and you see the, uh, you read the, the chapter of the overtones, you tell me, yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. Because this is very important to, to, to have it very, very, very clear. Yeah. Okay. Coming back. Now, we're here. So now, as has already been shown, again, in page 58, the bass tone of the 6-4 chord finds plentiful support for its urge in the overtones of the other chord component, the other note of the chord. There is then in the 6-4 chord a conflict between its outward form, its sound, and its inner constitution. Whereas its outward form indicates, for example, the first degree, its constitution, its instinct demands the fifth degree, the dominant, because of the overtones. This conflict may indeed have a certain similarity to what which is thought to reside in the dissonance, since the latter also strives for a change of the fundamental. So there's a conflict between listening to yes, you're listening to the to the first degree, let's say, if you have G C and E, but actually because of the uh, bass tone being the fifth. Now there's a conflict towards actually skewing towards the fifth. Nevertheless, whereas in the actual dissonant tones, dissonant tones, sorry, sound together that can never in any arrangement be consonant. The tones of the six four chord are in the other arrangement absolutely consonant. Triad the demand of the sixth chord for resolution to be treated as a dissonance is thus by no means as stormy as that of a real consonant. The sixth four chord and the actual dissonance have only this in common, that in both lies a conflict that attracts attention and seems to have a right to special consideration, to special treatment. This special treatment of the sixth four chord will not have to consist just in preparation of resolution, as with the dissonance. And what is called preparation resolution of the sixth four chord has little similarity to the preparation resolution of the seventh chord, is not the same. 
because actually it's not the dissonant chord by itself. Yeah, the, the seventh chord is, is dissonant. It has a diminished fifth, yeah? Or at least it's a restless, not dissonant, but at least restless interval diminished fifth. But this much is certain anyway that the sixth four chord whose problem could be left but not understood was always treated in a special way. This fact alone would have been enough to give it a unique position. The problems inherent in the sixth four chord may be less significant or different. The method by which it was treated perhaps exaggerates these problems, perhaps without even dealing adequately with them. But where its unique position has its origin in convention or in nature, that position is nevertheless quite definite. So, the preparation, yes, uh, I, I will not uh, quote this because it's a quote that he doesn't understand. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this is the way that we write it, Laura, 164. Yeah. I must recapitulate. The urge, this is the most important thing of the chapter, by the way. The urge of the bass tone to become the root is supported by the overtone. The sixth four chord should thus be resolved by actually letting its bass tone become the root. For example, the sixth four chord of the first degree moves to the fifth over a sustained G. Now, who can tell me, show of hands, where do you see that example? Yes, Georgios. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. In final cadence, yes, authentic cadence, yes. Um, and one of the most uh, common uh, names is the cadential 6 4. Yes, that's the common name. That is precisely that. The one way it was handled, maybe more, yet the conflict in the 6 4 chord and its tendency towards resolution are not absolutely compulsory. One does not have to give in, for nothing more than overtones supports this tendency. It is perhaps possible by, to bypass its tendency carefully by drawing attention away from the conflict and the plot thickens. <laughs> That can happen if one of the two prominent voices shifts the responsibility for the harmonic proceedings to a melodic line. This voice draws the attention away from the vertical and towards the horizontal, away from harmony and towards melody. A good way to do that is to use a section of the scale in the bass, three or four adjoining tones of which one, wherever possible the middle one, carries a 6 4 chord. That maybe, now if someone is, is maybe, I don't know, is um, figuring out that in the Kepler book there is an example of that. In chapter 1. But, I will let you know. If the ear catches a melodic progression of that sort, it then hears this progression as the principal concern of the moment, decides that the fleeting 6-4 chord is only incidental and feels satisfied. That could all be explained differently, as follows. In the 6-4 chord, two tones struggle for preeminence, the bass tone and its fourth, the actual root. Yeah, the bass tone and its fourth, the actual root. The following chord is a concession either to the base or to the root. So, the following chord that, yes, is going to be, uh, it's going to say, okay, I'm going to skew in, in what, what, what function? I will give in to, to what? If the base tone is victorious, then one goes to five. Yeah? The bass, always, I, my, all the examples are in C major, okay? So, G, C, and E, chord, goes to G, B, and D. So, first in 6-4, yes, the bass says, yes, I'm going to give in, yes, and it goes to the 50. 
Sometimes, however, the concession does not go so far, but chooses rather a middle course. Then it can even happen that the third, that is a third in general, becomes the root. And then it's like, when it's by six, hidden, when two parties score, the third rejoices. That one goes to the third. And something, and remember, I don't know if you remember, but at some point, yeah, you say, well, why the third go to the third? Now, slowly but surely, we're going to see the, the, the many cases in which the third can be used. Yeah? <laughs> can be used. Yeah? So, so the one goes to the third. And something similar takes place if the fourth, the root, does not give in. Yeah, so we have three cases so far. Now, um, then, so did, did you understand that the one goes to the third? Mm -hmm. Everyone understood that the one goes to the third? Georgios, give an example in C major. But there's one example. Yes, there was an example, but just in case. GC goes to, I don't know, goes to GBE. Yes, there you go, fantastic. <laughs> That's it, yes. <laughs> and something similar takes place if the fourth, the root, does not give in, etc. Then after one, or the tonic, comes four or six. You see why. In these three cases, both of the struggling chord tones, in fact, succumb. Yeah? In three, the median, G is only the third. Yeah? E, G, B. The G is the third. In four, the dominant, and six, C is the fifth of the fourth. F, A, C. And the third, respectively, A, C, E in the Again, everything is E major, yes? The sixth degree is a median, A, C, E, C is the third. Each has a satisfaction, however, that the rival did not win. And the chord tones seem to become very nearly as spiteful as people mm -hmm. the moment they come into contact with the latter. That then is the other way, one can deal with the problem of the 6-4 chord. The method that has, its, that has its occur with a passing note in the bass. These two methods bear similarity to some forms of the other distances and their treatment. Therefore, it may be justifiable to speak here also of resolution. Although resolution of the other distances has a different psychology. Yet, one should distinguish between forms that allow harmonic explanation, replacements of the chord tones by the overtones of the bass or the first one, and those that are derived from voice leading occurrence of the 6-4 chord as a passing chord. Yeah? Passing chord. Yes. Again, I will, I will, I will, I will uh, ask again if someone has any you know, if you, saw, if you saw an example of the latter in the Kaplan book, in the first oh. yes. An example of passing chord. Yes. Epic. Tonic, five, six, four, tonic, first inversion. Okay, there you go. So that, in that case, yes. Yes, you have, or <laughs> there's a, there was another one in the, in the first chapter. Does he do the one with the pedal? Yes, on the one four hour five one six four five one four six four five. Uh, I don't know many. many. But what it, it all happens? <laughs> it's, it's you have in total prolongation or prolongation of harmonies. You have a, you have a, a lot of examples. And one is the, from the fifth, a pedal on the fifth. Yes, fifth. Yeah. Yeah, they go. Yes. Yeah. Yes, in between fifths as well. Because mm -hmm. 
He always, uh, I mean, something that, that so far happened, he always started with a one. Yes, he never started with a fifth. Yes, for example, in the Kaplan book in prolongational harmonies, you have five. Once it's for five. Yes. Again, I mean, that's another example. Yes. Why? Because that can be used even in, well, it is Yes, and um, standing on what? Oh, standing on the dominant. Standing on the dominant. But the tonic is also often happening. The yes. same as the fourth. The tonic yes. prolongation. Yeah, but that's why, I mean, yes, it's, not, it's true. But, he never, I mean, so far, he, he well, he will, but so far he, he never uh, started with a fifth. He always started with a one. Hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, but he can be. Yeah, five, as is for five, yes, as, you know, like the case of the, of the standing domain. Just to connect, yes, object, the two, yeah? So, um, so, yes, one should distinguish between forms that allow harmonic explanation, yes, as the, the, the overture for the base, the base, which is the of explanation, which is, very solid, by the way, I believe. And those that are derived from voice leading. Yeah, and this is in which prolongational harmonies takes place. Yeah? Or at least related to the Kaplan book. Yeah? Occurrence of the fifth seat four chord as a passing chord. Yeah. One must do what I do, expand the idea of resolution accordingly. So preparation. The so-called preparation can be explained the same way. One of the two chord tones was there first, the root, if the fourth or the sixth preceded, possibly the seventh chord of the second, if the seventh is C, C, F, A, C. Now, I, I, he, he, he actually is, uh, you know, the, the next chapter, the next topic is seventh chord. So, there, yeah, he's getting ahead of himself. Or the bass tone is the fifth or the third preceded. Yeah? Or the G. Or the bass tone. Whichever was there first would stake its claim to victory on grounds of its seniority. I love it. <laughs> one could also view the matter this way. That, to prepare for this conflict, at least one of the tones is introduced beforehand, or also to explain the stepwise introduction of the sixth four chord. This is something in treatises in harmony is very common, that's why he's kind of uh, not explaining too much, yes, but we can't get to that point. That a melodic bass line alleviates the harshness of the phenomenon. Usually, and this is something very common in harmony and will be in counterpoint, so pay attention, a melodic bass line alleviates the harshness of the phenomenon. Memorize that phrase, yes? Because in music it's very, it's very, very common and very effective, yes? If you want to introduce some harshness, do it stepwise, yes? The customary treatment of the six four chord is difficult for me to explain in every respect with nothing left over because I find that this treatment does not completely fit the problem inherent in the chord. I admire the capacity of our forebears for fine discrimination. They rightly felt that the six four chord is not the same thing as the triad. But I know also too well how the intuitively discovered knowledge subjected to exaggerating treatment of orthodoxy becomes far removed from the original brilliant insight into nature. Okay, that's a comment. Nevertheless, this is important. We shall now work with the six four chord according to the dictates of the old theory, for reasons I have already frequently mentioned. So the preparation, basically. Yes, and you have to memorize this. According to the rules of the of that theory, the six four chord should be one, prepare, two, resolve, or three, appear only as a passing chord, and four, the bass voice should neither reach nor leave its tone by leap. Again, 
The bass voice should neither reach nor leave its tone by leap. Either it should be sustained or it should come and go in the midst of stepwise progression. These rules correspond to a certain extent to point three, the passing chord. Why, I mean, why should the four be important? So the bass voice should neither reach nor leave its tone by leap. So you can, uh, you can get to that bass tone by leap or you, uh, and you can't leave it by leap. You have to do it by step. Why? He said. One more. Why? <laughs> this. To what was the verb for the harshness? <laughs> a melodic mm -hmm. bass line alleviates the harshness of the phenomenon. Memorize that. Alleviate. <laughs> yes. That's why. So everything, I mean, in general, in music, yes, if you want to introduce something which is could be seen as harsh, yes, introduce it and leave it by step, yes, which is a less, yes. The preparing is, uh, I don't do that. I don't prepare. The six bad, period. you're just bad. But, <laughs> but, no, but I'm crazy. You got to play the consequences but, of that, okay? <laughs> Fami <laughs> redo. You don't prepare that, no? Ore, no? No. No, wait a second. Just a second. You're confused. You're, you're getting confused between ornamental and structural. Careful. Well, the 6 4 is confusing. What Careful, because harmony is always structural. Yeah? What you're actually doing, what you just played, was, was something that, that introduced ornamental components, not structure. It was a passing chord, yes. Yes. <laughs> but it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that, that's why. It's, it's careful because if a chord can be used, can, can have different hierarchies. A chord, if I do, if I do this, I'm prolonging a harmony. Careful yeah. with that because when you're the prolongation of a harmony can can take can use a chord can use a, a, a vertically yes um, can 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 use chords yes but that doesn't mean that the function that does exist. Don't think of an example with a non ornamental let's say six four. We Where can see it? we can see examples. No, that does it. Like you're raising an issue that uh, is uh, is important because in music, I mean, although this this book, yes, is is, is very theoretical, yes, you see that there's no example, there's no one single example. Well, actually, after is we can have some mm -hmm. examples, in, in, but he skips all that part. If not, the, the, I mean, I, I believe that he chose for, for this book. Uh, he focused in giving us the reasons, yes, and go to the core, yes, and not get kind of distracted. Or I believe that he leads to you, yes, the going to the pieces as he did, at his test as he did, and I'm sure he did, yeah, saying, okay, now if you want to double check, well, go on and do my work, what I did, yes, we can do that, yeah, we can, we can, we can have. Uh, before the seventh uh, diatonic seventh, yeah, which is the next topic, uh, a couple of examples. There are a lot of examples. That's why I'm 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 relating this yes to the Kaplan book because you're going to find a lot there. Yeah, you're going to find a lot there. So it's basically it's prolongational. Yes, basically it's prolongational. Yeah, but careful with that because if the, the hierarchy in, in a natural, yes, that we give in music is given by the stronger preposition, yeah, repetition, 
and if a chord or note, of course, is longer in value. So we have those three components. If you see that in music, something is repeated, something is on a strong metric position, which is always the first. <laughs> yeah, the first beat. Yes, the bar. Um, and then longer in value. Yeah, that would mean that is structural. Yes, that is something. Mm -hmm. That is, that is that, I mean, it gives you kind of a hint that it's going to be structural. If in the middle you put several chords, yeah. Uh -huh. As well, those elements. Sorry, sorry? But 164 before a cadence has all these elements, no? Yes, and that's why it should, should be prepared. It should what, what, what? It should be prepared. No. <laughs> well, we'll have to see the examples, that's why. Chord. Second chord in first inversion before 164. All the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> But that's why we, 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 I mean, it's an interesting idea to, 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 to see examples, yes, and to, to do it, uh, yeah. I mean, to, to comply with this, but then to, not, not to just obey, I mean, if we just obey blindly, right, we wouldn't be in line with the, with the, with the thinking of Schoenberg, hmm. right? Because he, he, he said, look, just don't follow me, this is my, my view. Yes, these are my reasons. Yes, I study the piece as well. That, that is a job. So yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do it. Yes. Um. So, but let, let me think about which were examples. Yes, I, I will try to, to see if we can if we can use just the cape thing. Yes, because if not, it's going to yeah just just to connect. Yeah, the, the lesson. Okay, so uh, the base should be uh, at least now yes, should be reached yes by step and left by step. Not by this. The preparation of the six four chord differs from that of the dissonance in that here the here two tones are to be considered. We can prepare either the fifth, the bass tone or the root. That is one of these two. Tones should have been a component of the preceding chord. That's the preparation. I should appear in the same voice in the six four chord. And I say in the same voice, please, yes, because I have seen many times in previous exercises that you that the voice doesn't resolve in the in the note that it should be or it doesn't prepare. Yes, it appears in other voice. Okay. Yes, so careful with that. The resolution takes place as follows. Either the bass tone is sustained and the other voices over it change a new chord, or the bass tone moves a step up or down and becomes the root or third of the next chord. Again, either the bass tone is sustained and the other voices over into a new chord, so basically that can be an example of what? Let me see. This first one. The prolongation. Prolongation, yes, exactly. A pedal note, uh, 164 to the 5, yes. Or the bass tone moves a step up or down and becomes the root or third of the new chord, the next chord. As, and then we have to see some examples of that. A 6-4 chord should neither immediately precede nor follow another 6-4 chord. No. Why? Let me see. That would mean setting directly, directly beside one unresolved problem, another problem. That's, that's the explanation. Also for the moment, unresolved. That is obviously contrary to the sense of form. This progression also reminds us of parallel fifths, which usually come about because the fifth of one degree goes to the fifth of another. That's why. Yeah. The first one seems to be a. I mean, it goes in line with what he just explained. If you have something unresolved and you follow with something that is also unresolved, you have two problems and you didn't resolve any of them. 
Yeah. And then yes, the power of text. I mean, should be an issue. As, uh, but I would say, remember that a six four chord, yes, and, and if you want, yes, also a composer, or you see that the, a composer is an analyst, does, yes, write six four chords in line. Well, either if your analyst starts to wonder, wonder, wonder why, yes, goes he or she goes against. Yes, this. Or as a composer will say, well, I yes, I want something to be unresolved in time. I believe also that is what we should, you know, uh, ask ourselves. If at some point, yes, as composers, we want that. This will be a handy tool. So that's why this is not something that is, there's no morals here. I'm not saying don't use it. I'm saying if you, it's something uh, that is, it looks unresolved. You follow something that is also unresolved, or yes, that you don't resolve, you have a problem. But if you want to sustain that situation for X, Y, Z reasons, go ahead and do it. Yeah? It's not a bad thing, it's just the nature. We, we try to see things as, as they are, yeah? Without morality. Passing chord, 164. The treatment of the 6-4 chord as a passing chord is concerned only with the bass voice. I have already mentioned that we are not then dealing with a harmonic means, but rather with a melodic. So now voice leading should be the most important thing. For the effect of this form depends upon drawing the attention to a melodic progression. Such a melodic progression is that Scale segment of three tones with middle tone character, six four chord. The scale can be regarded as melody, even if only as the simplest, most primitive melody. Primitive because it is deficient in articulation and variety. In it, there is only one principle for the succession of tones, step, step by step, and only one direction, either up or down. Down. A more complicated, more interesting melody is more richly, more variously articulated. So, passing chord as something melodic. Yes? Now, uh, we're going to uh, go up to here. Yes, all the examples. Yeah, we're going to see them next lesson. Yeah? The duration and the size of the intervals change more frequently in the continuously and the repetitions by which one can perceive the system manifest not several principles, at least variations. This scale is still a melody, however, for it does have a system and structure. It's true. It is a primitive melody, a relative artless pattern, but it is all the same a melody, even an artless form. I have mentioned this property of the scale here because occasions will still frequently arise where certain problems, only apparently harmonic, are to be traced to melodic origins and are to be dealt with melodically. Thus, for example, the good effect of a diatonic or completely or partially chromatic scale in the bass is only a consequence of melodic energy. Hence, it's almost more the effect of a kind of polyphony than of harmony. When you're more interested in melody, horizontal than vertical, you have that effect of polyphony and a harmony. Yeah? It's the effect of a melodic line inviting devoted primarily to harmonic ends, although not thereby necessarily superior. It's yet so striking that it yields a form of satisfaction equaling the satisfaction evoked by harmonic means. It is not necessary that a complete scale always be used for this purpose. A scale section, three or four adjoining tones, will also be heard as progression, as melody. So the chords are not used, yes, I use this now, yes, not to sing, uh, talking about something that we are real, yes, yes. It's approximation to ornamental, an ornament, the ornamental side of harmony. Yes, you have several higher. Now, such melodic progressions appear frequently in harmonic phrases when no 6 4 chord is being dealt with. One could thus think this technique ought to be used more sparingly so that when it is 
used, it will have the needed force. That does not seem to be necessary, however, for the sixth four chord in this form should not attract attention. It should only pass by unobtrusively. For the scale section, a means used exclusively, exclusively sorry, for this purpose, the sixth four chord would then inevitably stand and then we're going to see all these examples, yes, the next lesson, and the next, yes, because there are quite a lot, yes, but we're going to see a little bit of a, uh, we're going to, uh, as a corollary, let's just say, we're going to see some like examples. I like the, uh, you know, because it's, it's a little bit of a of theory here, but um, I think that seeing examples of this will really, really um, the understanding, yes. So it's a difficult. It's, a more, it's, it's more difficult than um, maybe even like this is for course, yes. And that's why it's not used. It's used sparingly. So if, if you see in, in musical literature, yeah, it's used. It's, it, it is mm, used only in cadences. So composers. Uh, never, I don't know, I would say dare to use it, but it's not very common, so we have to see why. 